What's good to YouTube? It's me, boy Squiddy, back in another video. Today, I want to talk to you guys about how to beat Vanquish Soul. This is a deck that just came out in the Wild Survivors side set uh, very recently, I think in the past week, and it's actually seeing some play in the competitive atmosphere. It's gotten second place at Italian Nationals and then also top eight at Slovenia Nationals. So needs to say, I think this deck is actually decently good. Uh, it plays a lot like if you guys have been around for a long time, like Gadgets, it gets infinite resources and kind of like plays a very grindy control game. It's Kind of reminds me a little bit of a Sky Striker, but also like with the uh, theme of adding constantly, adding new cards, and then drawing cards and controlling the game with hand traps. Another thing I want to quickly talk to you guys about against this deck when playing is the positioning of your monsters is super important because of the fact that Raisin actually has an ability that's a quick effect to pop a monster on the field in the same column as itself by revealing a fire and dark attribute. That's the effect the assist effect, so to speak. So when you're normal summoning or special summoning a monster or any monster committing to the board for that matter, generally when they have the Rock of the Vanquisher in a zone, you should definitely summon your monster beneath the Rock of the Vanquisher because what this means is that if they do summon the Raisin off of the effect of the Rock of Vanquisher and want to pop the monster that you normal or special summon, then they're gonna have to pop all the monsters in that column, which includes the Rock of the Vanquisher that our opponent controls. So by putting all of our monsters beneath their monsters, it means that they will always be forced to pop uh, with the Vanquisher Soul Raisin on their own monsters. And in addition to that, when they have other monsters on the board, if you wanna protect your monster from being popped by Raisin, you could just commit your monster beneath that monster's column in the main monster zone, which means that they're unable to summon the Vanquish Soul Raisin into that exact same column where the monster's occupied, so they're not able to threaten a pop on your monster. So that's just one thing to keep note of. So without further ado, let's just dive in. If you guys haven't seen my other video on how to play Vanquish Soul, uh, you can definitely check that out. I'll leave a link as well to that. But without further ado, let's talk about the first couple of hand traps that are good with this deck. So Ash Blossom, Generally, you want to Ash Blossom uh, anything that allows them to get started. My personal preference is actually Ash Blossoming the Raisin. So this deck revolves around summoning Raisin. No other card is really a starter. It's part of the reason why they play Small World, they play Pot of Prosperity, they play Reinforcement of the Army. Basically, any way to get the Raisin is how they start their plays. It's a lot like Math Mech, how they kind of rely on Circular, because what Raisin does is it straddles for another Vanquished Soul monster. And you kind of have to cycle this throughout your turn and then later on their turn using the Link 1, which is Rock of the Vanquisher, to special summon back Raisin to the board and constantly search the attributes that you need so you can start popping things. So if you ash the raisin, typically this means that they're not able to get to their next play. So I generally like doing that. Uh, it makes it so their hand doesn't get uh, what they need either for the attributes. And if they don't have raisin, they're activating something like a small roll, pot of prosperity for six. I would definitely ash those as well, just to make sure that they don't have access to raisin, which means that they don't have the starter and they don't have the tools they need to get into their uh, toolbox. Obviously, this is a no-brainer, but you should definitely be ashing Stake Your Soul as your number one priority as well, especially if they're starting off with this card. If they go activate Stake Your Soul, reveal something like Nash Blossom, it means that they're trying to get a Raisin, so we do want to Ash Blossom this immediately. And the fact that it's basically a pseudo-emergency teleport for any of their uh, in-archetype Vanquish Souls, so it's a lot of uh, fun for them. If they get to resolve this, they're going to be put ahead, so definitely be Ash Blossoming this. But if they're going Normal Summon Raisin, a lot of times it's their first play, then I typically just like Ash Blossoming them there. You don't want to take the chance and hold it for stake your soul only to get punished when they don't have it and they've already been able to add a copy of the engine piece that they need off of the raisin. Alternatively, if you're playing a deck that relies heavily on your monsters resolving and not getting Book of Moon by their uh, Vanquish Soul Dust Devil, which is a card that they search off of the Mad Love, what you could actually do with Ash is hold it until they special summon the Mad Love off of the Rock of Vanquisher and then Ash that. So if you're playing something like Cash Terra, you might not, you might want to make it make sure that they don't have the Book of Moon effect on the field to threaten your board and then end your turn. So instead of Ashing Raisin in that scenario, you might wait until they go Raisin into their Link One and then they're going to special summon Mad Love, which is the traditional opener on their turn one and then when they use mad love effect you can respond with ash so they're not guaranteed to search their book of moon which means that you're probably going to be able to play regardless of what they have now let's move on and talk about impermanent impermanence uh ghost mourner and also effect failure so with infinite impermanence and um, Valor, I like to actually wait until Rock of the Vanquisher a lot of times because this is traditionally how they're able to extend their play. Uh, generally what they do is they normal summon Raisin and then have uh, a way to add the 
Vanquish still Mad Love, either off Raisin, or if they already have the Mad Love, then they'll add uh, something else like a Borger. And then from there, they're going to make the Link 1 and then Special Summon from their hand and Special Summon the Mad Love so they can add one of their two copies of either this Vanquish Soul Dust Devil or the Continue so they can set up for next turn. And then they might bounce it back with Heavy Borger so they can reveal Dr. Mad Love as a Dark to draw a card. So what I actually like to do is instead of imperming the Raisin, you could just wait until the Rock of Vanquisher, then that way you're guaranteed that they're not going to be able to special summon Mad Love onto the table. The issue with imperming and Valering Raisin is that if they already have a copy of Mad Love in their hand, then it means that they're going to be able to special summon anyways. And on top of that, if they have a copy of Borger, or Vanquish Soul Caesar Valius, which are two ofs in the deck, then they could just chain that effect to bounce back the Raisin that you targeted back to their hand, which means that your infinite impermanence and Vec Failure are just gonna fizzle without effect, and then they're gonna get the search anyway. So that's why I generally like holding it for the Rock of the Vanquisher. The issue with Mourner is that it's a lot worse against this deck because of the fact that Rock of the Vanquisher is a quick effect. So what does that mean? Well, on the summon, then there's gonna be a window where both players have the opportunity to act activate trigger effects so this is the only opportunity you would be able to ghost mourner and if you ghost mourner target the rock of vanquisher they're just going to be able to chain the quick effect of rock of the vanquisher to use the effect anyway so effectively ghost mourner doesn't really do anything instead it might be a lot better to wait until they actually special summon something out so something like the dr mad love and then be forced to use a ghost mourner there because mourner can only be used on special summon monsters similarly if they're special summoning something with raisin then you gotta ghost mourner there but just one thing to note is that on your turn, Ghost Mourner loses a lot of value because when they special summon a monster like Raisin, since you're turn player, you have turn player priority to activate your trigger effect, so you'd be forced to Mourner here. But if you Mourner here, then the Chain Link 2 would just be your opponent's trigger effect, which means that they would get the Raisin or whatever monster they summoned to use the effect to search. So Ghost Mourner effectively doesn't do a lot uh, on your turn. However, you could use it on something like a Caesar Valius if they're summoning it on your turn um, just to threaten the pop. You could use it right away, and hopefully they don't have a way to have assembled all the attributes attributes yet before using Caesar Valius. Alternatively, it would just bait them out to pop and use the effect of Caesar Valius there on the spot by Ghost Mourner. So it's not like the end of the world. It's not completely dead, but it's a lot worse than Infinite Impermanence and Valor, in my personal opinion. Another hand trap that's actually very good against the deck is Fantastico Dragon Phantasme. So I've talked about this in some of my previous videos, but they're always going to go into the Link 1. That's like their traditional play. That's a setup. It's a lot like Sky Strikers. They have to go into this Link 1 to set up their board. The monsters kind of revolve around this rock being on the table. And a lot of times they're even ending the turn with just a Rock of the Vanquisher or like another monster on board with a grip full of hand traps and monsters that they would special summon off of rock. So rock is like the portal that enables all of their plays. So when you Phantasme on the rock, you're going to be able to draw two cards, you're going to be able to put back one, and then you'll have the Rock of the Vanquisher. Um, you'll have a Fantastical Phantasme to threaten the Rock of the Vanquisher by entering battle and forcing them to use the effect. Or just having a generically good monster that also stops hand traps like Effect Veiler from targeting you in Infinite Impermanence, right? Because it has the ability to discard a card, negate the effect that would target your monster. So I really like this card. If you have si space in this side deck, definitely play this card because it's also good in crossover against other matchups like Sky Striker. It's good against uh, certain decks that play links. Even Math Mech, you know, like random decks like that that's still playing link monsters. It's a very, very powerful hand trap. Tron Lockford is actually not very good against this deck. It's decent because it's a lot like Math Mech where if they go with normal summon raise and use the effect to add a Mad Love and you Tron Lockford there, it's gonna guarantee that they're not gonna be able to draw off of Borger or get the search off of Mad Love. But I feel like it's a lot less um, impact against this deck. You're still going neg one. Again, this deck is a control deck. It's a lot like uh, a tempo based deck. They're whittling down your resources to simplify the board state with hand traps and they run away with the game because they have more cards than you. So you don't really want to take negative ones against decks like this. Instead, you want to attack them by putting on a huge board pressure, putting on a lot of monsters on the board, just threatening the tempo of the board state instead of like one for one trading with their cards because their cards are going to gain advantage every time they're summoned. So if you're playing a deck like Brandon Despi or something, you just put a bunch of fusion monsters, big monsters on the board. This deck has a lot of trouble dealing with hard big monsters. This is one thing I noticed. If you build a board, their deck really struggles to break a board, okay? They only have often only one or two removals in the form of Caesar Valius. Maybe if they play Phoenix Enforcer, then they can pop something else, but you're still going to leave monsters on board if you build like a huge board. They're not going to be able to get rid of everything on one turn a lot of the times. So they kind of have to rely on their XYZs, their rank 4 toolbox, things like Zeus, Exciton Knight, or Caesar Valius on the following turn and try to control the game with their hand traps. So building a board is really, really impactful against this deck. And as such, you don't want to take neg ones with Droll Knockbird or cards that uh, take away from your advantage. You want to gain advantage instead of taking away from your opponent. So I would not side this card against this deck in particular. 
Ghostfall and Haunted Mansion, though, also not great against this deck. You could use it on Rock of the Vanquisher when they target a monster in the graveyard to add to their hand, or rather, it's not targeting, but when they use the effect to add a Vanquish Soul monster from the graveyard to hand. Alternatively, it could also be live against Vanquish Soul Continue, which is their in slot, in engine, monster reborn, quick play, which allows them to target a Vanquish Soul monster in the graveyard, pay 500 life points, and either add it to the hand or special summon it. So it's not completely dead. However, it's definitely not a card I would side in against this deck because it only works in niche scenarios, either against Vanquish Soul Continue or against Vanquish Soul Rock when they're using the effect to add, which doesn't really happen traditionally. So you're still kind of negging one by playing this card because you're trying to trade one for one with your opponent. It's not really bottlenecking them, anywhere in their play so in my opinion i would not side this because a lot of times again guys they're using rock of the vanquisher to special summon from their hand on turn one as opposed to add back unless your hand is already bad then they're forced to add instead so a lot of times ghost valley is just not going to get the value that you want so i would not side this card against that deck Another card I would personally not really like siding is D-Shifter. It's not very good against the deck because their deck also can side D-Shifter. I mean, if you're playing a deck like Kashira, you could argue siding in Shifter if you have certain cards that are already worse in the matchup against them that you want to take out because uh, D-Shifter does kind of stop them from setting up the turn one play where they get the Raisin into the graveyard and then set up with Vanquish So Continue. So if you already have cards like Mourner in your deck that's just not very good against the deck, then maybe you would make an argument to side in Shifter over the Mourners because it's marginally better. It's stops them from starting their turn one board but again this is a neg one card it doesn't explicitly stop their deck from playing they're still able to uh play based on the shifter they're still able to mold their hand around it if they have a hand that already didn't care about shifter then shifter just does nothing and they're still able to draw cards they're still able to search with mad love and then it's just very hard for you, especially as a Castera player, to play when they also have hand traps and then cards like Spanker Soul Dust Devil, which already turn your deck off. So personally, I'm not a huge fan of Shifter against this deck because it's not graveyard reliant. As, as much as it seems graveyard reliant, it's not really graveyard reliant at all, guys. Nibiru is also quite bad against this deck because they typically end in four summons with their traditional play. So they go normal summon Ryzen, use the effect to search Mad Love, link off into Rock, that's two summons, then they special summon Mad Love, that's three summons, and then they add a spell card, and then they could bounce it back with Heavy Worker for four summons, draw a card, and they end on that and set a card. So it's always like, it's like sometimes you can knock them off guard with it if you never know, but personally I just don't like having a card that's for the most times dead, often more than not, and especially if they see you playing Nibiru, they're going to just play around it anyways for the rest of the duel. So what's the point in playing Nibiru when it's just dead. In my opinion, it's just not very good against the deck. You guys shouldn't side it. The Crow is actually decent against the deck. It's not the best thing in the world. However, it does stop a couple of things. It stops them from adding back the Rock of the Vanquisher. It could get rid of the Raisin in rotation. If they link it off, you could just immediately use the Crow to banish the Raisin that they try to act add back to their hand. Uh, it also stops things like Vanquish Soul Continue because it does target a Vanquish Soul monster in their graveyard. So it's not like the worst card. I wouldn't say it's one of the top cards to side against this deck, but it's still a card that you could consider if you don't have anything better to side against them. So it does have that niche scenario when paired with other hand traps and other non-engine cards, you're still getting a lot of value out of it by banishing a card and potentially catching them in an awkward situation when they're not able to commit a raise into the board because they relied on adding that back in the graveyard. So that could be uh, some marginal utility there. And it's a lot better than Ghost Spell because in Ghost Spell's scenario, uh, Rock of the Vanquisher is still a quick effect. So if that raisin is still in their graveyard, then they could just add it back anyways. So it's not like the best thing in the world. I personally feel that Dita Crow is a lot better in that specific scenario. For those decks that are actually playing Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries, for example, in the Vanquish Soul Mirror match, uh, this card is actually alright because you're getting rid of Rock of Vanquish which does turn off a lot of their plays. However, they're going to still play a lot of hand traps. They're still going to be able to go to Ryzen, and if they already have a way to have a Dark or Mad Love Engraved, they could just add Borger, bounce it back, and draw a card and start playing the game as if they didn't have Rock of the Vanquisher and they're just using Vanquish Soul Heavy Borger and also Caesar Valleys to control the game. So it's largely dependent on their hand. And personally, when that happens, when a card is largely dependent on your opponent's hand, I just don't like playing it. So I'm not a huge fan of Ghost Reaper. I know not a lot of decks are playing it, but maybe in the mirror match it could have some usage because you're already being able to get rid of your opponent's Rock of the Vanquisher and then you have Rock of the Vanquisher so you can get that additional plus every turn. So there's some value in the mirror match specifically, I would say, but it's not my number one pick. Kaijus are actually really good against this deck. Let's talk about the board breakers for a second because a lot of times they're ending with the Rock of the Vanquisher and maybe one set and a bunch of hand traps and maybe a, a Borger on the field. So, while well, you have turn player priority because you're the turn player, so in the main phase upon entering, because Rock of the Vanquisher can only be activated during the main phase, you can actually tribute over it with a huge Kaiju and then they just stare at the Kaiju and they can't activate the Rock because it's no longer on their table, which means that they're not going to be able to cycle the Raisin, they're not going to be able to commit cards to the board like Caesar Valius. So they're not going to be able to fix their hands with uh, certain arc 
attributes that they need to fire off their assist effects as well. So being able to turn that all off with one single Kaiju, I really like that a lot. And you can also use it against cards that threaten you like Caesar Valius or even Heavy Borger on the field if you can't get rid of them. Um, so it's a lot of fun. I just really like how Kaijus kind of turn off their portal from special summoning. So personally, if you're siding Kaijus already, I definitely like these board breaker advocates against this deck. Because again, we're not really taking away from our opponent. We're taking off, their, we're cutting off their plays and then we're going to start playing our handout. So we're hopefully not going to get any disruptions for their in engine. It's going to be entirely on hand traps because they're not going to be able to commit a Caesar Valius to the board as easily with three attributes in their hand to start popping. So I like Kaijus against uh, that deck for that reason. Another card that you guys should heavily consider siding in is actually Cosmic Cyclone, especially if your deck is dying to floodgates. The Vanquish Soul deck can actually play there can be only one really easily into their deck. A lot of decks are actually main decking it because their deck is a lot weaker. They can't deal with the boards like we previously mentioned. So they have to rely on floodgates to whittle down their opponent's board and control the game state. There can be only one is definitely going to be sided or main in their deck. There are also some Vanquish Soul decks that are siding Skill Drain because their effects can be activated and they can actually chain the effects of Heavy Borger or Vanquish Soul Caesar Valleys to bounce to the hand, which means that when it resolves, their monsters are not going to be on the table, so they're going to be able to resolve their effects and add cards to the hand. They could loop Caesar Valleys, use the effect to pop, and then chain Heavy Borger, and then upon resolution, they get to pop as well. So their deck can actually play Skill Drain, and then it hurts you, but it doesn't hurt them. So make sure you have a Cosmic Cyclone ready for the Skill Drain. Um, also, uh, if you're playing a deck like Branded, I know that most players in the Vanquish Soul uh, group are actually playing Grave of the Super Ancient Organism because they have such an abysmal matchup against Bis uh, against Branded in general. They can't get over Mirror Jade, they can't get over big monsters. So Grave of the Super Ancient Organism is effectively a mystic mine against Branded, so they're reliant on this card to prevent you from playing. So make sure that you do have the back row removal for these Floodgates, guys. It's not just a matter of hand traps. Game 2 and Game 3 especially, they're going to side on a lot of Floodgates, so make sure you do have the answers for that. I do actually like Dark Ruler no more. If you're already citing this in the metagame for sprites and other big board creating decks, then it actually does have some value. It's a lot like uh, Gamma Seal in that in the main phase one, you turn off the Rock of the Vanquisher so they're not able to summon the Rise and they're not able to use your effects. If they have something like a Caesar Valleys already on the board, that could also be useful because you get a two for one. The only caveat is if they're also playing Floodgates and your Dark Ruler has to be paired with another way to get rid of the Floodgates so you can play anyway, so I don't like it as much. Uh, I would say cards like Forbidden Chalice or For Forbidden Droplet are a little better because you can wait to use them until the last second to chain them on top of the Rock of the Vanquisher so that way you know whether your play is going through before you commit a card to the board and potentially pass if they flip a floodgate. So I actually like Forbidden Chalice against the deck as well. So again, talking about like Infinite Impermanence, you can also use Forbidden Chalice and Infinite Impermanence in the draw step or the standby phase of your turn before Rock gets a chance to activate because it can only be used in the main phase. So when you draw for turn and your Imperm is your sixth card and they only have a Rock the Manquisher, you could immediately activate Infinite Impermanence a lot like you would on Sprite Elf in the previous format where sprites were a thing. You're using this before main phase so they're not able to use the effect to revive something to the board. So yeah, that's about all I had for the video. If you guys have any more tips on how we can actually beat this deck, because I think it will be actually a top contender in the metagame, probably a tier two roguish level, but we're definitely gonna see this deck around for the next couple of metagames before the ban list even considers hitting them. So if you guys have any tips, definitely let us know. Other than that, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.